that that testing certainly made the largest and most wood chips I've made in any of my testing. I need a better vacuum. Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinkro Tools. Tonight we are going to be talking about something with this Tim to Toolman Taylor puts up more power. We are talking about the Flex Fold Advantage stud and joist drill. So let's get right into that here on Tinker with Tools. So two things to get out of the way right away. One, you're gonna notice the workbench is a little messy. That's, I, that's because I actually recorded the first part of this video and did not hit record on my microphone. And so it did not pick up any of the audio. Secondly, DeWalt did actually send this tool over for me to review. It was kind of them to send over and we do appreciate their support of the channel. But as always, the opinions are gonna be of my own and I will tell you exactly how I feel about this tool. So let's get into it. All right, so what are you getting with the Flex Fold Advantage Stud and Joist Drill? Well, with one of these, this is the 996, you are going to be going about 14 inches plus when you're chucked up with an auger style bit like this. With this, you're actually going to be able to shave over two inches off that length, getting into those stud bays really nice and easy. And more than that, you are going to have superior control on it because you're going to have two hands on the tool. You're gonna to have good position. You don't need to be in the stud bay with it, which is how I kind of feel when you're using a traditional drill like this. In addition, you are going to be getting a power bump when paired with the right battery. With a 996, you're gonna be getting roughly 800 unit watts out. That's how DeWalt measures their tools. So 800 on the 996. With the FlexFold Advantage 999, you're gonna be getting up to 1200 unit watts out which is impressive, that's a big bump over the 800. When paired with the proper battery, they are actually quoting 1800 unit watts out. Now this one is a single speed, there is no speed selector, you do have a variable speed trigger, so you can kind of throttle it that way. You're gonna be getting 1250 RPMs out of this tool um, in its speed, and it does come with their E-clutch, basically it's their anti-kickback control that's going to allow you to maintain control of the tool and feel safe doing so. As I mentioned, you do get a 7 16 quick insert collet that is just this easy. Goes in there, it is locked in, and it is ready to go. And then if you don't like that, you can actually get model number DCD444, which is still a flexible advantage drill, but it comes with a half inch keyed chuck instead. So all in all, you're getting a great tool. But with that, we need to be able to see what the performance is and how it is in practical use. So we're gonna go ahead and set up a stud bay, uh, kind of a mock stud bay here, where we are actually going to run an impact driver, which is what some people might turn to to be able to do this job because of how well it fits in those stud bays. We'll also show you the 996, and then we'll obviously showcase the DCD 445. So you can see what kind of power and performance you're gonna be getting in this and what the practical application. So let's go ahead and review the specs here on the screen, and then we'll get right into the testing and go through that. All right, so as I mentioned, some of the existing options you have out there, obviously an impact driver is going to work pretty well because it's going to fit in the stud bay well. And with an impact driver, you're not going to worry about uh, some of the kickback that you're going to experience with a drill. So let's just go ahead and run this through. This is a three quarter inch bit. Okay, so obviously, especially on a smaller bit, that is going to work fairly well but you are dealing with quite a bit of noise. Now, if we move up to something like the DCD-996, the first thing you're gonna see is this thing barely fits into a stud bay, okay? It actually is not quite fitting. Now, if I really stick that in there, I can kind of wedge it in there, but it is not fitting very well. Now, obviously you can drill a little bit on skewer and then kind of get in there. 
and it does have good power to go through and create that penetration and give you exactly what you're looking for. But as I mentioned, it's just not fitting very well. And if you had to do a bigger, more intensive bit, then you're starting to deal with having the necessary control over the tool to be able to protect yourself there. All right, and so now the other option is the stud and joist trail. You'll notice when I come in here, I actually do have good control. I've got both hands on the tool. It fits in there. I can still get exactly what I need. And then when I go ahead and run it, if you're doing this day in and day out, you are going to get a lot better control over the tool doing it that way. And that was just with a smaller bit. Now, what happens when we need to do something a little bit larger? So let's just go ahead and now run this bigger inch and three quarter bit. With this tool, what you're seeing is that when you step up that bit, it doesn't necessarily step up the amount of taxing it is on the user because of both the E-clutch and the two-handed operation. Now, if we go up to our two and nine sixteenths, the biggest bit that you're gonna potentially be driving or drilling through on most studs, you are going to see just how much control you have here. So as you can see, at no point does it feel like you are out of control with this. You have good access. You're gonna be drilling clean and precise holes because you do have good control over the tool. And although it is heavier than what you're dealing with with one of these tools, you actually are going to see good control and I, in my opinion, maybe even a little bit less fatigue because of how easy it is to operate. All right, so we had to relocate uh, this piece. <laughs> there wasn't enough weight on my other workbench or to be able to put enough pressure on it to actually go through it. So you can see it all right. Um, but let's go ahead and give this a try. So for comparison, we are now actually going to be doing a, the 18 inch bit on the DCD 996. We are gonna start in speed two. It is the most similar. So not a lot of these tests are going to be timed, uh, but we will show you the time on those two just so you can get a comparison. All right, so now we are going to be showcasing um, a two, or sorry, a two and a half inch holdozer uh, from Milwaukee in this. And unlike other times when you're using a hole saw, uh, the E-clutch, it comes in actually very clutch, pun intended. It does kind of give you that comfort that it's not going to bind up and kick back on you. And then we'll just showcase the two and nine sixteenths. Now, is it going to see a bump when paired with that flex volt battery? Let's go ahead and test that. We're gonna swap back to the five amp hour and run that same bit. On. Kid you not, we're already seeing a bind up. We aren't able to make it through that two and nine sixteenths inch bit with the five amp hour battery. Let's go ahead and try the Irwin bit. And now let's switch back and do the Irwin with the flex bolt battery one. Where do we come in on the stud and joist trail? Here's what I'll tell you is, can you do this job with another tool? Well, we showed it tonight that both the 996 was capable of fitting to the stud bay, uh, kinda, and able to drill the hole. Obviously had the power to do it, especially on some of the smaller diameter bits. Um, and even the impact driver had the ability to fit in that stud bay. But this tool is purpose built for doing this job. And because it is purpose built, it is going to be able to do it more, and it's going to be able to run better, and you're gonna have, in my opinion, better reliability than burning up your impact driver trying to do a job that was meant for a bigger tool. 
that's where this comes in. I think this is a good uh, entry point into that stud and joist category because it's going to give you the power advantage of having a flex volt battery on there. As you saw with that five amp hour battery, it did not want to do that bigger switchblade bit. And yet with it, it was with the flex volt, it was doing everything that I threw at it. So it is a quality tool and that is what I want to try and express to you is this is a tool that in my opinion, if this is the work you're doing, this is a tool worth buying. It's going to make your life easier and it's going to be there and perform for you from what I've seen um, exceptionally well. The right tool for the job is always going to be better than trying to make another tool work. Now, if all you have to do is one hole, probably not worth buying something like this, but if you're gonna be doing it repeatedly, go ahead and upgrade to this with confidence knowing that it's going to perform well for you. And it's gonna give you a lot of versatility and even make your job site safer um, as you're using it with the protections that it has in place. All right, so what are we talking about on price with this tool? Well, it doesn't come cheap. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it there. This tool does run $329 bare tool, $499 in a kit with a nine amp hour battery. Like I said, this is just the six. So technically I didn't even show the full power of this tool um, as it's, it's quoted those full power specs with the nine amp hour battery. So you are getting a versatile tool. It does come at a cost, but it, like I said, if you're doing it day in and day out, it is going to make your life easier and it is going to really improve the quality of your work in my opinion with how fast and how quickly and how safely you can do that. So you can pick it up at Home Depot and obviously anywhere else you can get the FlexFold Advantage. Um, thanks for watching this video. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have a question about the FlexFold Advantage stud and joist drill, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. I'll try and get it answered for you. If you have any other experience using other stud and joist drills from other manufacturers, go ahead and leave a comment down below what your experience for, or if you've been running this one, the experience of the tool community obviously helps paint a bigger picture than just what one opinion can. So go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. Um, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and make sure to check the bell icon so you can get notified when I upload new content. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this has been Tinker with Tools.